In all the madness of earnings season, you may have missed the most truly most incredible quarter. One of my absolute favorite companies reported just last week. I'm talking about Brunswick Corp BC, the world's top maker of recreational boats like my own 17-foot Boston Whaler, as well as boat engines with a nice sideline and fitness machines. I like to think of Brunswick as being the ultimate play on big-ticket discretionary spending because neither owning a boat nor buying a gym membership where much of their exercise equipment is sold necessarily counts as a necessity. Last Thursday, we got some very good news on the discretionary spending front as Brunswick delivered a truly stunning quarter. Now, the numbers here were solid. The company posted a three-cent earnings beat off a 74-cent basis with inline revenues and solid full-year guidance. But what really got people excited here was management's bullish commentary on the conference call, something we, we told you to expect, by the way, which is how Brunswick stock soared 7.8 percent in a single session on Thursday. Until recently, Brunswick had been pretty flat for the year, but now the stock is roaring, and I bet it's got much more room to run. Do not take it from me, though. Let's talk with, deeper with Dusty McCoy. He's the chairman and CEO of Brunswick Corp., who's sadly set to retire early next year. Find out more about where his company's headed. Mr. McCoy, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Thank you, Thanks, for, Thanks for coming Thanks on. For you know, I've followed the company for years. I did not know that there will come a quarter where you have expenses up only 1%, raw costs down, and the amount of money that flows to the bottom line of this company is magnificent. It really works great. Uh, when you have a nice growth, a gross margin growth, when you can hold operating expenses, everything just clicks. And we had a great quarter. Now, the thing that really shocked me, and I have to admit I was concerned because Scott Wine runs Polaris, and he's done a magnificent job, mm -hmm. and they did not have a good quarter. Uh, uh, Harley Davidson did not have a good quarter. And, you know, these are active, you know, uh, Arctic Cat did. Mm -hmm. And I often think, people often think Brunswick with them. What are you doing that these other high-ticket discretionary guys are not? Is there just something charmed here? Well, I wish, no. <laughs> I think we're, we're positioned very differently in the sense that most of the guys you named, Jim, are competing against each other. Right. They uh, are. And if you look at our positioning in boats, we're the largest in the world, and engines were the largest in the world, and the fitness equipment were the largest in the world. Therefore, our competitive set looks very different than theirs does. So that could be it. And there's yes, really, it when you look at the other boat makers, are they niche that you're up, up against, or billion dollar yacht guys? Or? They're, they're, they're actually quite niche. And the way we look at it, there are probably four companies that are global like okay. us. And then all the rest are very niche and very local. All right. Now, one of the things you said in the conference call, which I, on the investor's day, which I absolutely, 1110 uh, is the investor day, that's coming up. Yes, sir. In the conference call, you said, we're settling in to be a pretty damn boring company. <laughs> we want to become boring. Tell people what that means, because I think that no people don't necessarily aspire to be boring, but yeah. maybe that's what we want as a, in our stocks. That's actually been my goal for the last decade, Jim. Uh, the way people had invested in Brunswick in the past is they looked at what the cyclical nature of the company was going to be and what the economy was going right. to do that's to the what company. We thought of you and that's what we're trying to take out of the equation. So we've made ourselves much less cyclical, we operate much better, and that makes us less prone to economic t downturns and upturns. We just want to be a steady 15 to 20 percent improver in op pre-tax operating earnings and let's say 18 percent improver in EPS quarter after quarter. Okay, but all that said, uh, in the end, they are boats and we always tend to think when people do better, they buy boats. When people do not as well, they sell boats or don't buy boats. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't change that basic nature. We can, but we can operate very well, and we can make sure that we do well globally. Right. So, so, for instance, with the, the weak dollar, a lot of people are importing. Well, let's go to their countries and fight them. Right. So we make boats in Europe. We make boats in South America. We make boats in New Zealand. That makes us a true global company, and we can work against well, all the countries. Brazil, you said you're, you're taking huge share in Brazil. Unfortunately, Brazil is doing badly, but if Brazil <laughs> ever to do bad, well, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's the third largest recreational boating market in the world. Third, it's, Brazil is. Brazil. You know, it's only the eighth largest economy. It's the that, third largest correct. boat. Yeah. U.S. first, Europe second, Brazil third. So they have a so, darn so, good time down there. So we need to be there. Yeah, yeah. And there are going to be tough times in a country like that, so you just work your way through them. Wow. Okay, how much does it matter that, uh, that fuels come down for you guys? Hardly at all. Really? Uh, we've never been able to correlate boat buying with lower fuel. But those but bigger what, engines that are selling so well. Well, but, but boaters don't think of fuel mileage and, and gas really consumption. Silly. And actually what happens, though, is that when we see fuel prices lower, we see people use their product more, which helps our very high margin parts and accessories business. Right, it does. Yes. Now, uh, you've got, uh, I've got to talk about fitness equipment. One of the lines that I saw was very interesting. Was it federal government buys fitness equipment? Yes, and really? we're, we're, we're the largest fitness supplier to the federal government. Where do they use it? Well, when the wars were going on, one of, oh, one of the right. really great and warming things I got to talk to were veterans who would say, I either patrolled or I worked out on your equipment. Uh, oh. and, and, and it was really moving to get to talk to those veterans. Do you have all the sports teams, too? Yes, we do. You do? You have the, yes. you have the NFL? 
Uh, many of them? Many of them. Yeah. We, we have clubs all over the world. One of the great things I get to do is, for instance, go to Brazil and see the big soccer clubs there using our equipment. Oh, sure. Oh, we all love them. Okay, so at uh, time left. You, we did mention you retired. What, uh, yes. Some big plans, stay on some, go boating. I'm going to boat, and I'm going to fly, and I'm going to farm. <laughs> All of them. All of them. <laughs> all in this country? All, all, all in this country, yes. Well, you've done a remarkable job. I remember Thank when you. Brunswick was going to be the ultimate sink or swim, and you had these divisions that didn't seem to fit. You really got it right. Thank you so much. And you've been so kind to me, Jim. Well, no, the stock's been kind to our, to our people who Well, watch. thank you very much. That's it's what matters. Great. Thank you. All right, that's Dustin McCoy, Chairman CEO of Brunswick Corporation, just a magnificent company, a great quarter, and a good guy. May have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.